Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an empties video. I'm excited to sit down and share all of the products that I've recently used up. I do have a lot of makeup products to talk about, so that's what I'll focus on. And then I'll talk about skincare and then I'll finish up with hair care. But I love filming empties videos because when I use the product up completely, that's when you know it's a product that I've really enjoyed. And even if I'm not going to repurchase it, I still like to be able to sit down and give you guys a full review on it and let you know if I've found a replacement for it in my collection. So I actually used up a foundation and it's been a long time since I finished up a foundation because I have been using a few different formulas but I used up the Fenty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation in the shade 140 which is kind of my go-to. These days I usually mix it in with something that's a little bit more moisturizing just to balance it out because it is so mattifying but I did end up repurchasing this because it is my go-to foundation. One tip for you guys make sure to you know twist off the top once you're done with it. It's kind of hard to remove and originally I thought I wasn't able to remove it but some of you guys just told me it takes a little bit of extra effort to twist it off but once you twist it off there is so much product left in the bottle and that's where they get you with these products because you think that it's empty and then once you remove the actual pump you can use it for another few weeks. So I think that I got like another month out of this product before I had to end up repurchasing it which is a lot so make sure to do that if you finish this product up but I did love this. I still do so I did end up repurchasing it. I also used up the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I used up every single drop of this because again I did remove the stopper and once you remove the stopper you can still get a lot of product out of here. So again I do recommend doing that with pretty much any product that has a stopper in it but this lasted me such a long time. I started using this in like summer of 2018 and then I just recently used it up. So a little bit of this product goes a super long way. You also get a lot of product in here. You get 0.5 fluid ounces and for more of a full coverage concealer that's a ton of product I used this like pretty much every single day last year so I did again end up repurchasing this one because it is one of my staple products although at this point I do have some more affordable alternatives that I like just as much but I love using this on days where I just want my makeup to look extra smooth and it does stay in place really well I did just recently use up the Urban Decay Perversion liquid liner I love this liner so much and I can't remember exactly when I opened this up I think it was like at the very beginning of 2020. So now that it's June, it's lasted me about six months. Sometimes I'll switch it out for something different, but typically this is my go-to because it's super dramatic and intense and it just glides over my eyeshadow so easily. I did have a backup of this in my collection, so I'm currently using that one and I will continue to repurchase this because I haven't found anything that works as well as it. I did finish an eye primer. It takes a lot of work to use up eye primers and I actually have a few open in my collection, so I don't think I'll be repurchasing a new one anytime soon but I did enjoy the CoverGirl lid lockup. This is a little bit more of a sticky primer and I definitely prefer more of a smooth primer overall because sticky primers are a little bit more difficult to work with. They do lock your shadow into place but I find that I have a harder time blending shadows on top of them. So if you're somebody who does enjoy more of a sticky or tacky base I think you'll really enjoy this but if you like more of a smooth base I would probably skip over it. It worked really well for me but I don't plan on repurchasing it anytime soon. I did finish up another CoverGirl product. This one is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. This is one of my favorites. I actually think it's like my all-time favorite and I did end up repurchasing it because Ulta was kind of having like a buy one get one half off sale but I also purchased the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored and that's what I used today for the first time and I really like it. It's a little bit different than this one but I feel like it separated my lashes a little bit more than this one does. This one makes my lashes super dramatic and voluminous but to the uncensored wand is a little bit different. Like it actually makes them dramatic and voluminous, but also separated. I did finish up a bunch of brow products all at the same time. So I used up the LA Girl pencil. This was in my project pan, and I will do a project pan update for you guys very soon. I am not currently purchasing any new brow products because I have a ton. I purchased quite a few during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty because they had my go-to Urban Decay Brow Blade on sale, and then they also had the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz on sale. So I did stock up on those, and I'm not planning on repurchasing anything anytime soon, but if I was to repurchase an affordable brow pencil, this would be the one. I really like the formula of this because it's a very rich brow pencil, and some brow pencils are a little bit more waxy, and they're not super pigmented, and I like a really rich, intense brow look, so this helps me achieve that, and I think that this one is like five or six dollars. I also 
finished up the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Dark Brown. Like I told you guys, I do have a few of these that are currently unopened. I try not to buy a lot of backup products because I've noticed that my makeup preferences can change pretty quickly, but when it comes to my staple products, if I can get them on sale, I do like to have them in my collection because this brow pencil is normally $21 and I won't pay $21 for it because there are some good alternatives like the LA Girl pencil. So I do have another one or two of these, but in my mind, $21 is a lot for a pencil. I did use up two brow gels, so I used up the ColourPop Brow Bosch Gel in the shade Dark Brown, which I do love. Typically, I do kind of have a backup on hand, but like I said, I'm trying not to do that as much because sometimes my preferences can change, and brow gels last a really long time. So during the Sephora VIB sale, I repurchased this other one that I used up. This is the Hourglass Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel, which I did use up. This lasted me probably close to a year, so this does last a long time. It's not even like you get too much product in here. So in here you get 0.1 fluid ounces and you get the same amount of product in the ColourPop one, which is funny because the Hourglass brow gel looks a lot bigger. But this brow gel is like a wet formula, so I don't feel like you need to use a lot of the product and it just locks my brows into place all day long. So I have been enjoying it. I did use up two powders, which is great because I've been trying to make a dent in my powder collection this year. I think I have like three or four other powders in my project pan. So by the end of the year, I think I'll be able to use them all up completely. This one is the e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD Powder. I do like this, but I also have the It Cosmetics Translucent Powder in my collection that I'm working on using up as well. And they're very, very similar, so I don't feel the need to repurchase this. I did finish up the Too Faced Peach Perfect Mattifying Loose Setting Powder. I was trying so hard not to repurchase this because the other loose powder that I have in my collection is from Fenty. So as soon as I used this up, I started using the Fenty powder in place of it. And I don't know what the issue is, but but like all of 2020, I feel like I'm very sensitive to makeup products that have very strong scents if they're kind of unpleasant to me. So like this product has a very strong scent. It has a strong peach scent, but that doesn't bother me because I like it. The Fenty powder has like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of like a fresh scent, but it also makes me think of like babies, like some sort of baby product. I want to say baby powder, but I don't feel like that's it. There's something about that product that just smells so strong. And it, I can smell it on my face even after I apply the product. Like I remember doing my makeup and then like one night I was sitting and editing a video at like 10 or 11 p.m. And I was like, I can still smell this powder on my face. So that's been a problem for me because I just don't like that. That being said, I did repurchase this and... I'm okay with that because I think it is a product that I will use out completely. It's my go-to setting powder, especially during the spring and the summer when I want to lock everything into place. And I don't have any other loose powders in my collection other than the Fenty one, which I will end up decluttering. And the last two makeup products I used up are the ColourPop No Filter Concealers in the shade Light 16. I do use this product as a foundation on days where I'm going a little bit lighter with my makeup because it does give really nice coverage, but it blends out in two seconds. It is so quick and easy to use. It stays in place well, and I've talked about this a lot on my channel. I feel like this product is always in my empties. So I kind of feel like I just shared a lot of makeup products that I love that I did end up repurchasing. And like I said, I try to find replacements in my collection if at all possible, but sometimes you just have products that you love and you rely on, and it's hard to find replacements for them. But I did find some replacements for a few of these skincare products. So let's move on to skincare. Okay, let's start with the Drunk Elephant C Firma Day Serum. So I had a full size bottle of this as well as a travel size. I did use these up completely and I am using a different vitamin C, which it's been a really long time since I've switched to vitamin C's. In fact, I think I incorporated this into my skincare routine in like 2017, maybe 2018, but that was the first time I started using a vitamin C serum regularly. And I really saw amazing results with it. And I think this product works so well, but I have been testing out the Ula Henriksen Banana Bright vitamin C. I don't remember the exact name and I just kind of like the texture of that product a lot better. I feel like this product actually has a little bit of a sticky texture and what's weird is I would have never described it that way until I until I tried a few other vitamin C serums that are a little bit more smooth. So I've been using one from Pharmacy off and on, and then the one that I've really been using very often is from Ula Henriksen, and it just glides on my skin in a very smooth way. It doesn't feel sticky, and it does have a strong scent, but I like the scent better than this Drunk Elephant one. The Drunk Elephant one has a very 
noticeable scent. Some people describe it as a hot dog scent, which is really gross to me, but it is kind of like a metallic tangy scent. The only thing is that I don't know if the Ulla Henriksen one is as effective as this one. I do feel like the Drunk Elephant Sea Firma is the most effective vitamin C serum that I've tried and I've tried a couple over the years. I think I'll be able to make a better informed decision after I use the Ulla Henriksen one up completely but so far I am enjoying that one and you know I don't feel like I need to run out and repurchase this one because that one's working well for right now. Speaking of Ula Henriksen, I did use up the Banana Bright eye cream. This is my favorite eye cream. I think I've repurchased it like four or five times at this point. I do currently have it in my skincare cabinet because I did get this in the Trend Mood box as well. I think it was a full Ula Henriksen box. It's so smoothing and so hydrating and I just feel like it works well for me. I've read some articles that say a separate eye cream is not necessary and you should just be able to use your serums or your moisturizers around your eyes. Uh, I'm sure there's some merit to that but I feel like my eyes are very sensitive so if I put any sort of like serum or moisturizer around them they tend to get very irritated if I'm not using a very gentle formula. So the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream does work well for me too, but I can't use just like any serum or moisturizer around my eyes because it just, it irritates them. Speaking of First Aid Beauty, I did use up the facial radiance pads. My husband has actually started using these as well, and you guys, I finally got him to stick to a consistent skincare routine. I never thought I would see the day. In fact, I think in my last empties video, I told you guys that I was trying to get him to just wash his face with like a gentle cleanser regularly because he just uses like the soap in the shower and he has incredibly dry skin. And I was like, I have all these skincare products. Like, let me give you a simple routine, just stick to it, it will make a difference. But what I did is I just chose three products and I was like, just try to use these three products. And I feel like three products might even be too many for some people, but they're all uh, First Aid Beauty products. And because he has super dry, sensitive skin, I feel like they've been working well for him. So he just uses the face wash, the facial radiance pads, and then the moisturizer. So I started using this product in January or February because I was dealing with a lot of texture on my skin and a lot of people recommended this product to me because it is a little bit more of a gentle exfoliating product and it did work well for me. It was such a great starting point because First Aid Beauty products as a whole are very gentle, but I was doing some research into AHAs, BHAs, and BHAs are a little bit more ideal if you're dealing with clogged pores or even if you have oily skin. So I actually switched to the Polish Choice BHA and that has done just wonders for my skin. So I feel like this was a good starting point for me and it did work to clear up my skin but the Polish Choice product kind of took it to the next level. So that has been my ideal exfoliator. So I won't be repurchasing this product for me but if my husband sticks to his skincare routine which We'll see. If he does, I will repurchase these for him because they are working well for his dry skin. So I've also used up the Visanti Brighten Up Enzymatic Face Rejuvenator. This is more of a physical exfoliator. Before I was using any sort of chemical exfoliator, this was my go-to. And now that I've been using the Polish Choice BHA pretty regularly, I don't feel like I need this product. I would probably use it like every other morning. You know, I'd use this and then more of a gentle cleanser. I do feel like I've read mixed opinions on physical exfoliators. Some people say they skip them completely because they can cause micro tears. Some people say, you know, they kind of have a place if they're a little bit more gentle, but I did like it when I was using physical exfoliators. It is a little bit more gentle and it does work well to kind of clear your skin. I just feel like I don't need it at this point, so I won't be repurchasing it. The facial cleanser that I do use every single morning and every single night is from Dermalogica. It is the Clear Start Breakout Clearing Foaming Wash. I have repurchased this a few times and I did recently repurchase it during the Sephora VIB sale. It works so well for me. I feel like I'm not necessarily Really super picky when it comes to facial cleansers but there really are two or three that I notice make a big difference and my skin is pretty breakout prone and pretty oily and I do feel like this product helps kind of keep my skin a little bit more clear compared to other cleansers. So because of that, it is something that I will continue to repurchase. Also for Dermalogica, this is pretty inexpensive. I want to say it's right under $20. 
and Dermalogica has some expensive products. I think they have like their main line and then they have a less expensive line and that's what this product is from. Okay, the last skincare product I used up is the Drunk Elephant Slay Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. I just finished this up like two nights ago and I really like this product. I think it works so well to remove all of my makeup. It just melts everything right off, including my eye makeup and it's very gentle. I've tried other cleansing balms that really irritate my eyes or they kind of give my eyes eyes like the product gets in my eyes and then they're just very cloudy and I can't see well for like an hour afterwards and that is obviously just not ideal so I really enjoy this product because I don't experience any of those issues it also doesn't clog my pores like some of the other heavy makeup melting cleansers can do and when you break this product down price per ounce it's actually a great value compared to other products on the market that are very similar even including some like drugstore or more affordable alternatives. So that being said, I would repurchase this product because I love it, but I just purchased something similar from Milani to test out and see how it compares. So I'll let you guys know what I think about that product once I use it for a little while. If it's not as good as this one, I will go back to this one because I do love using it. It works so well to take my makeup off, but I do want to kind of test out some other options and see if anything is just as good. Let me finish off with a few hair care products. I did use up the IGK First Class Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoo. I probably go through this product like every three or four months. It is my go-to dry shampoo. I love spraying it in my hair at night before I go to bed because because the next day my hair just looks clean and I've talked about this so much on my channel, but I haven't found anything that works as well as this product. It is my go-to. I did get this on sale during the holiday season, so I think I have two more of these just because I know it's something that I'll end up repurchasing, so I kind of stocked up on it, but I love it. It works so well. I also used up the Kenra Volume Spray at number 25. I usually feature this in like one or two empties videos every year because I purchased this a long time ago when Kelly Gooch recommended it, and I haven't gone back to any other hairspray because before this I was using I think it was like the big sexy hair which isn't cruelty free and this one works so well for me I like how my hair looks so much better when I use this product compared to other hairsprays because I do feel like it holds my curls into place but it almost kind of lets them fall into more of like a loose wave rather than a super tight curl I also like this product because it does make my hair a little bit more voluminous so if I want a lot of volume I'll flip my head upside down and spray this or I'll kind of like pull my hair out and spray it and it will just give me more of a thick voluminous look even once my hair kind of falls if I like kind of like you know play with it a little bit it just kind of has that more voluminous look throughout the day so this product works extremely well it is a little bit more of an expensive hair care brand so I haven't purchased a lot of products from the brand but I am curious to try more because this hairspray works perfectly for me. And then I did use up a two different Briogeo products. So I did use up this Don't Despair Repair Strength and Moisture Leave-In Mask. I think it was the first time I used it. So I don't know if this is a newer product. It might have been around for a while, but I had it kind of sitting in a drawer or a cabinet. I think they sent it to me in the mail a while ago, and I was running low on leave-in conditioner, so I decided to try this out. So this is a leave-in mask. It's supposed to leave your hair stronger, softer, healthier, and hydrated, and it really does work. Before this, I was using the IGK Thirsty Girl, which is what I'm currently using now because again, I did have that in my collection as well. But I think I like this one a little bit better. I love using this one on days where I let my hair air dry because it just leaves my hair so soft and frizz free and healthy looking and I do like it. So it comes with four ounces. It's kind of expensive. I think it's maybe somewhere within like the 20 to $30 price tag. But I did end up repurchasing it because I think it just does a good job at leaving my hair super soft and healthy. And then I also used up the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I've repurchased this product for like four years at this point. So it is one of my go-to products. Right now I'm using their Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask that has honey in it because they did like a limited edition version. And I don't know if they still have that one, but I do like that one a little bit better because I feel like you get the benefits of the original mask, but it's more hydrating. So if they do have the honey version, I would like to repurchase that. The only problem is the packaging is like shaped like a little bear. And I think a portion of the proceeds did go to benefit bees in some way. So if it is available, I'll link it below. The packaging was not ideal because it's hard to get the actual product out, but the formula was so good. It's a little bit more moisturizing than this one. So if they have that version, I will repurchase it. 
If not, I'll buy this eventually because I do like to have it in my collection. I feel like over time, it does strengthen my hair. And because I deal with a lot of breakage like around the front and even on the bottom because I do heat style my hair, it is nice to have this and incorporate it into my routine at least once every week or every other week. Okay guys, that is the end of my empties video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I feel like I showed you a lot of products that I love and I have repurchased or I will repurchase, but you know, sometimes there are just products that are staples in your collection and they are the best of the best. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.